when I was preparing the workshop, there was an exercise I was thinking about doing and I'll just mention it right now because I think it's helpful. I think we're all, you know, we're all suffering. We're all struggling on some level with narcissism wounds and whether it's the ways that we might feel completely locked into our own experience or whether it's the ways that we might be completely impacted by narcissists, you know, whether they're <laughs> people who are presidents or people who are, you know, our boss or parents or something like that. It's like the, um, the illness, I think, in our time, right, uh, is an extreme state of disconnection and individuals not feeling and living in ways that are really part of the fabric of the whole, right, and being responsible for themselves in that. Um, and that healthy sense of self that, you know, we are part of creation. And so what we give and do and speak and infuse in our gestures becomes creation. And that's like a healthy sense of ego, right? Is I can become creation. Um, but the dislocated ego thinks it can control creation, right? Like, oh, if I'm like this, then that thing will happen or this person will do that thing or I need them to do this so that then I can be happy, that kind of stuff. We end up being uh, separated, right? And we get locked into this polarity of otherness right? There's me and then there are others and we're separate somehow. We're not affecting each other. Um, and so when we notice that we're kind of like resonating from some of these places that might have some wounds of narcissism in them, again, whether we're feeling separate because we're in our own experience or we're feeling separate because we're relating with people who are not relating with us actually, um, I think it can be really helpful to kind of do some of the work that we did at the beginning around feeling the spine and the central axis and coming into the heart and then seeing yourself from the outside, but seeing yourself in your, in your light. Okay. And when I say light, I don't mean any particular hue of light. Um, you can be a multi-prismatic kind of expression. Okay. But that energy, right. That central core seeing that part of you, the effusive part of you, the brilliant part of you, the part of you that is pure energy, seeing yourself from the outside, right? Like perceiving that in yourself. Um, and then remembering that as a solar force, you know, your body is a solar force. You produce heat. You are part of creation, but you are also creating creation. Where are you creating from? Yeah, like when you observe yourself in your own light, in your own centrality, you might ask like, where am I creating from? Where am I sourcing that creation energy that moves through me? And to see that, right? To see your connection. Um, and you talked a lot about like this kind of trap of narcissism, which is also self-doubt and self-hatred. Um, and so coming into the centrality of the body, um, you can also, you know, ask into your centrality around your desires. And it's interesting, you know, the, um, like these symbols and how literal they become, because sometimes we posture around our desires. You know, it's like, well, I want that and then we have whatever our beliefs are about what we want and we go into a posture around it. And so when you tune in, you know, you can, you can uh, check your desires with your heart and your spine. And so if you're like, oh my God, I, you know, you're in your narcissism place. Like I need to prove myself in this way. This is, this is the validation that I need. When you check that desire in your heart and spine and you ask your heart and you ask your spine, do I really need that? Is that really what I'm desiring? A lot of times you're gonna get very different information and clarification of what you're actually desiring. And if, if what you're desiring is truly what you desire, you might ask your heart and spine, do I believe that this is possible for me? Do I believe that I can have this? Can I bring this into creation? And check your belief because a lot of us have wounding in our creation, right? Like we've been told by so many figures that we cannot create for ourselves what we truly desire, what we want. We can't express what we want. 
And so we might want something. Oh, I really want that job. I really want this kind of relationship. But in our centrality, we believe that we can't have it. And we believe that we're not worth it. Or we believe that what, you know, there's some kind of disassociation. Um, and when those blockages arise, you can ask into them, right? Like, what do you need to feel supported to believe that you can have this? Um, and with Leo and with the fire essence, we're always wanting to affirm the existence, right? And so once you find those places that need a little healing, you can work with affirmation. Affirmation is a very powerful practice that brings what you want into the present tense. And so if you find the part of you that doesn't believe that you're worth having a relationship with someone who actually loves you, you know, and cares for you in certain ways, you might find that space in your heart or your body that's resonating with that and affirm, yeah, that I am loved for all of these qualities and attributes. I am loved for who I am, right? And you bring that essence in here. And when we do that on the collective level, I think it can be really powerful. And it's, it's, it is a surrender. It is an offering because I can affirm in my own spine that peace exists, you know, even as there's war and even as there's violence. But if I can affirm that in myself and I know that that can be true in here, then it will help me notice when I'm coming out of peace in myself because I'm part of creation, you know, and at any moment I might be creating peace and I might be creating violence, but I want to check in, right, with where are my beliefs where am I centering around what I'm feeling to be true? 